people tend to overemphasize and think of AI from the perspective of how smart individual copies will be. Yep. And if you actually want to understand the ways in which they are superhuman, you want to focus on their collective advantages, which because of biology we are just precluded from, um, which are the fact that they can uh, they can be copied with all their tacit knowledge. Yep. Um, like you can copy a Jeff Dean or Elias Hetzkov or, or whatever the relevant person is in a different domain. Um, you can even copy Elon Musk, and he can be the guy who's every single engineer in the SpaceX uh, rig. And if that's not an efficient AI way to equivalent of them, you can yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if that's it's not best to have Elon Musk or anything, you just copy the relevant like team or whatever that. Um, yep. And we have this problem with human firms where there can be very effective teams or groups, but over time their culture dilutes, or the people leave or die or get old. And th this is one of the many problems that can be solved. Um, with these digital firms where you actually, firms right now have two of the three relevant criteria for evolution. They have selection and they have variation, but they don't have high fidelity replication. Yep. And you could imagine a much more fast paced and intense sequence of evolution for firms um, once, you, once you have this final piece click in. Yep. Um, and that relates to the onboarding thing, where right now, it, it, right now, you know, you like, they they are just aren't smart enough to be onboarded as full workers. But once they are, I just imagine for my own, like the kinds of things I try to hire for, it would just be such an unlock. Yep. It doesn't even matter. Like the salary is totally secondary. The fact that I can like this is the skill I need or the set of skills I need, and I can have a worker and just like I can have a thousand workers or in parallel if there's something that has a high elasticity. Um, of demand, I think is like probably along with the transformative AI, the most underrated uh, right. tangible thing that like you need to understand about what the future AI society will look like. Right. I mean, I think there's a point, there's a first point about this like very macroeconomic picture where you just expect a ton of scaling of all the relevant inputs. Yeah. And uh, I think that is like the first order thing. Yeah. But then you might have more uh, like micro questions about, okay, like how. Like, how does this world actually look like? Like, how is it different from a world in which we just have a lot more people and a lot more capital and a lot more, like, you know, like, because it, it should be different. And then I think these considerations become important. Um, I think another important thing is just that AIs can be uh, aligned. Uh, like, like, you get to control the preferences of your AI systems in a way that you don't really get to control the preferences of your workers. Yeah. Like, your workers, you can just select, you don't really have any other option. But for your AIs, you can like uh, fine tune them. You can like build AI systems which have the kind of preferences that you want, and uh, you can imagine that like dramatically changing basic problems that uh, determine the structure of human firms. Like for example, the principal agent problem might go away. Like this yeah. is a problem where uh, the you as a worker have incentives that are either different from those of your manager or those of the entire firm or those of the shareholders of the firm. I actually mm -hmm. think the incentives is a smaller piece of the puzzle. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think more, it's more about like mm -hmm. bandwidth and information sharing where it's often it just with a large organization, it's very hard to have a single coherent vision. Yep. Um, and the most successful firms we see today is where for an unusual amount of time, a founder is able to keep their vision uh, instilled in the organization, like SpaceX or Tesla are examples of this. Um, people talk about NVIDIA this way, but the, just imagine a future version where there's this hyper inference scaled mega uh, Jensen who you're spending hundred billion dollars a year on inference on and copies of him are constantly you know like writing every single press release and reviewing every pull request and answering every customer service request and so forth um, and monitoring the whole organization making sure it's like proceeding along a coherent vision and getting merged back into the hyper uh, hyper Jensen um, Hyper Jensen. <laughs> Mega Jensen, whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree that's a bigger deal. At the same time, I, I would point out that like part of the reason why it's important to have like a coherent vision and culture and so on in human companies might be that there's incentive problems exist otherwise. Like, I mean, I wouldn't rule that out, but I agree that the, like, aside from the overall macroeconomic thing, I think the fact that they can be replicated is probably the biggest that's right, deal. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Like, that also enables additional sources of economies of scale, where if you have like twice the number of GPUs, you can run not only twice the number of copies of your old model, but then you can train a model that's even better. So you double your training compute and your inference compute. And that means you not only double, like you don't get 
just twice the number of workers you would have had otherwise. You get more than that because they are also smarter, mm -hmm. right? Because you spend more training computers. Right. So then that is additional source of economies of scale. And then there's this benefit that uh, you can, like for humans, you like every human has to learn things from scratch, basically. Like they are born and then they have a certain amount of lifetime learning that they have to do. So in human learning, there is a ton of duplication. While for an AI system, it could just learn once. It could just have one huge training run with tons of data. And then that run could be deployed everywhere. Yeah. So that's like another massive advantage that the AIs have over humans.